Good morning. Okay, uh, today we had uh, uh, honorary captain for the week is Ryan Griffin. Uh, so not make that announcement. Uh, congratulations to DHC for our Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award uh, nom nominee. That, that's pretty cool. Talked to him yesterday about that. Uh, today's schedule adjustment. You know, so we're going to do a. You know, because of the the physicality of the games that we've had uh, leading up to this point, uh, we just feel that you know working with the sports science guys uh, on our team and talking to everybody involved, we're going to do a walkthrough uh, practice today, uh, similar to what we did uh, for the Thursday game. You know, so we'll do a walkthrough. We just had meetings today, uh, walkthrough uh, today, and then tomorrow we'll have a. I'll bring them in earlier because it's Thanksgiving, a shortened down practice, and then get them out after after the practice there. But uh, we've adjusted our meeting schedule to, to accommodate that. And then Friday will be normal. We'll do a fast Friday um, in the indoor, and then same thing Saturday and travel. So that's kind of the adjustment for the week uh, going forward. Um, you know, uh, Justin remains day to day. Okay, he's been cleared to practice today. Um, and again, th since it's a walkthrough, the estimation is, is that he would be limited in practice. Um, so that's where he is right now, and again, we'll assess that as we go through the week. Um, he's feeling pretty good, and we'll see we'll see where it goes from there, um, day to day. Um, so, uh, with that, I'll open up to questions. And what are you looking for throughout the week to determine if Justin can actually play on Sunday afternoon? Yeah, just how he's feeling. You know, what the medical staff is saying uh, to him and to us um, every single day, and obviously we got to put that out every day. And then uh, how he's feeling. You know, how he's feeling when he's moving, when he's throwing, um, and when he's just going about his business of operating as a quarterback. If he's if he's day to day today, isn't it doesn't it make sense that he would be at risk on Sunday of aggravating the injury? I mean Um yes and no. I mean we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I mean we'll see tomorrow will be more of a fast faster pace. Uh, we'll see when he's moving full speed, um, you know, during that time. Um, during the drill work and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll be able to tell. So day to day, he would not be, he's not a candidate to go on injured reserve. Then. No, no. Have there been conflicting information out, out there about what the injury actually was? Are you yeah. able to clear up? Was it dislocated or separated? Or? Yeah, I'm not going to talk specifics. Uh, but again, he was cleared. He was cleared in a limited fashion today. So. In terms of protecting that, that shoulder, what kind of risk is there by having him, if he were to play, go forward? I mean, is he, by being clear, is he at a point where you're not concerned about re-aggravating it or that kind of thing? Yeah, we'll see where it goes today. Uh, we'll see where it goes, and then when uh, we'll get to tomorrow, we'll know more. And I think by Friday, we'll know more. You know, I think uh, it's it's kind of those one of those things where you work through the week, and we'll see where it is. And hopefully, we're getting better and better every single day. But, but in terms of if you were to play Sunday, is he at enhanced risk of re-aggravating that and dealing with that beyond just one game? Uh, well, I, I think whenever you hurt something, and you always have a chance to re-aggravate it. You know, it could be you know an ankle, a knee, or whatever that might be. I mean, that's always that's part of the game, right? Can you learn anything about? You said we'll see how he is today. Can you learn anything about his health from a walkthrough, or are you just talking about just the passage of time? We'll just see if he feels better. 24 hours from now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, during a walkthrough, you do movements. You're moving around. You're handing the ball off. You're, you're, you know, going through the simulation of running a play. I mean, so we'll see how he feels doing that, and then we'll ramp up tomorrow and ramp up, you know, more on Friday. And we have to wear. I'm also trying to make sure that Trevor is in, in prepared to play if needed, and juggling those two things over the next three days. No, yeah, that, that's an important piece to it for sure. You always got to do that. Your backups always got to be ready. Um, you know, Trevor's been outstanding. You know, in the meetings, um, you know, he's, like I said the other day, he's very has great functional intelligence uh, to be able to operate the offense, um, and he's familiar with the offense. Does he need additional reps to, to be able to start, or how do you how do you juggle that? Yeah, I think that depends on how we go through today. You know, we'll see what, how how Justin feels today, and we'll make adjustments as we go. We've already talked about that. Man. Man, is Justin going to have to wear a harness or something to protect that area? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to talk about that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I, I would suspect that uh, if I were to answer that, you know, I don't want to get into all that. It's yeah. harness or not harness. We know how competitive Justin is. How do you kind of weigh that out when you're asking him how he's feeling, knowing he really wants to be out there? And, and Yeah. I mean, you know, once he's cleared through the medical staff, you know, that's, that's the number one, you know, thing that has to happen. And, you know, and then once the player says, yes, I'm good to go, you know, and then the, the last hurdle is, or the last thing that you have to say, okay, is because of who this guy is, is he, you know, really 
truly ready to go. But once the medical staff says he's cleared, that's what their job is. He's cleared to go, you know, and uh, then we got to decide, can he go full speed? Can he operate? You know, it's like anything else, you know, like we had an injury a couple weeks ago with a defensive back, you know, it's like, can he go full speed and can he operate? And that's, you know, up to the player and the coach's eye. Yeah, how much is gamesmanship a factor in this scenario? The fact that the Jets have to prepare for two different quarterbacks? Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, you always got to do that, you know, especially when you have two different types of quarterbacks. You know, that's a big deal. You know, if they were, if we had two similar quarterbacks, you know, that same type of style, um, that would be easier, I believe, for them if I was, you know, the opposing defensive coordinator. But because these are opposites and different, a lot of a big difference between the two, I think it is, it is a little bit uh, challenging for sure. Is it, but is it a benefit? Do you see that as a benefit from a coaching standpoint that you're keeping them kind of? Yeah, you don't want to give your opponent information that they that uh, they don't need to have. So the Jets changed their quarterback, you know, two hours ago. Um, is that an advantage to you now to know all week? Mike White and not and not Zach Wilson. Yeah, I mean they're still going to run their their offense, you know, um, but uh, there is a little bit different style there, um, you know, with those two quarterbacks for sure. You guys could easily just rest Fields, just play it safe. Uh, why would it be important to you to play him? If he is cleared to play, if he is physically able, knowing that he'll be limited and in pain. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I would just say that uh, you know, if he's ready to play, he, he's going to play. You know, and uh, and uh, he he feels that way. We feel that way. If he's ready to go, feels good about it, he's gonna he's gonna play the game. And really, you know, the reason is because we're trying to win. You know, we want to win the game. Um, there's a lot of great things, you know, through getting the experience uh, of, of playing a game, every single game we can, and uh, that's an important part to, to this season. Ben, how is this different just with the Tevin Jenkins situation the other day? Like, he was active, cleared yep. to play, but the situation for him was he wasn't, I guess, ready. He wanted to you put him as a backup. Right. For Justin, how it, did the two equate? Because it just kind of seems like if he's ready to play, he'll play, but you also had a player who was ready to play but, but didn't the other day. Yeah, well, Tevin was, you know, working through the week, you know, and then, you know, ended up aggravating it more during the course of the week. And, and it, it went down to where he was going to rotate, then he was going to be a backup, you know. So um, that's where the player felt he was. That's where the medical staff felt it was. And that's where we put him. And uh, he was there to, to be available for us if we needed him. Matt, the Jets are second in the NFL with 81 hits, and they're in fourth in sacks with 32. Is yeah. that a factor in whether you decide to let subject your quarterback uh, fields to, to that kind of? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they obviously have a good, really good defense. You know, they, they have a, good, a very good front. Um, their linebacker level is very good. They are really good in the secondary. You know, they, I, you know, they're in the top 10 in a lot of categories in defense right now. Um, you know, but uh, if he's ready, he's ready, and that's not going to factor into it. What position? Yeah, where do you see yeah uh, right now he's really working both. He's working inside and outside. But you know, um, you know, we're, we're talking to Simo. We like where he is. Uh, we're we're confident in him learning the scheme, both inside and outside. Um, and he's developing well, and he's gaining more confidence. So I don't know if I have an answer right now uh, for you in terms of inside outside. I think he could do both. So just as a follow up to the Tevin question, why would playing or why would having a compromised Tevin be active, more preferable to having Leatherwood active this past Sunday? Um, we just felt that was the best thing for our football team at that time. Is uh, Lucas Patrick, how's he coming along? Yeah, Lucas. So, um, then again, I didn't announce this before because, you know, he was still on IR. He actually had surgery a couple weeks ago. Um, and he will not be back with us this year. He's been in every meeting, been engaged. Um, so you guys know they had a toe, he had the toe injury, and we end up surgically repairing that. Um, but uh, he's been engaged the last couple weeks. He's good to go. Um, but uh, so yeah. Are you guys? Uh, will you guys be? Would you consider playing Justin if you're going to have to? tailor the game plan in a way that he's not at full capacity he can't you have to maybe take into consideration him taking hits or anything like that or do you I mean do you want him in a limited fashion like that or does he have to be full go able to do everything uh, I think I think the latter I think he's got to be full goal ready to do everything uh, that's what we that's what we would uh, we would feel good about that what, did, what were the conversations like the last 48 hours in the building about 
how to handle this, knowing that Justin is a very valuable asset uh, to the organization this year and going forward? Yeah, I mean, just whatever uh, is best for the Chicago Bears, you know, and part of that is obviously we b believe in the health of our players, you know, and that's, that's an important thing, obviously, with the quarterback. And we've had conversations with Dre, we had conversations with the doctors, of course with Ryan, of, of where we're going. Um, and we feel confident with where we are right now. And uh, he feels good today. We'll see where it is. Like I said, limited fashion for, pra for our walkthrough. Um, that's our designation is limited. So hopefully tomorrow it gets better and we'll, we'll progress from there. Does the, does the decision come down to a, a pain tolerance thing at, at the end, like for Sunday? Yeah, I think part, that's part of it. Of course, if I have an injury on something, you know, can I tolerate the pain um, with it and then move forward and function as a quarterback? And I think that's with any any uh, injury. It could be shoulder, could be a you know a mild sprain to the ankle or whatever that might be. Would it be impossible for him to play if it was the right shoulder? Would it be impossible? Yeah, I mean, like the wrong shoulder. Um, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, do we? <laughs> We'd have to wait and see. We'd have to see where it is. But, uh, I mean, yeah, good question. Final say on that decision. Is that something you have to clear through, Ryan, or do you have full authority to make that as the head coach? If he plays or not? Yeah. Um, it, that's a group effort. It's a group effort. Like I said, there's stages to it. You know, the medical staff has to clear him first. You know, the player has to go function and practice. Um, he has to feel good about his performance and being able to function out there to be able to operate. You know, and then the last, last hurdle is, that, you know, the coaches have to look at it and say, yes, he is functioning at a winning rate to be able to function in the game. You touched on it, uh, you touched on it a little bit, but what does change for the Jets with Mike White at quarterback? What is? What changes for the Jets with Mike White at quarterback? Uh, just a different style. He's, you know, the, uh, the first guy there is really has the ability to escape. Um, um, not to say that Mike doesn't, but... Uh, you know, he, he really can't escape. You know, he can move. He's an athlete. He can he can do the keepers, you know, a lot of things on the edge of the defense where Mike is more, uh, you know, really good at passing. You know, he's more of a pocket guy. So uh, that's really just the biggest change or difference between those two guys. I mean, if, Ryan, if, Ryan, if Ryan Poles doesn't want him to play fields and you do want him to play, does he play? There's a big argument then, I would say. <laughs> I would say that. No, I would say that. Um, I would say really uh, that uh, we have disagreements like that sometimes, you know, and we would just have to put our heads together and, and, and make a common sense decision on that, which is a lot of things. You know, when we, we, we make decisions on certain things like we did with, you know, Tevin last week, you know, we just got to make the thing that's for the best for the player and where the player feel, feels where he is um, performance-wise. So you'd want to kind of err on the side of caution, right? Because if there is a disagreement, you'd rather – this is your long-term quarterback, your guy you hope to be here for many years. So why mess around with one week, right? So you'd want to probably err on the side of caution. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, if we ever feel that a player is going to go out there you know, and, and, and harm himself, obviously we're going to make the err on the side of caution for sure. You know what I mean? We're not going to put a guy out there in harm's way um, and uh, he doesn't feel good about it for sure. Uh, so we want to do what's best for the organization, but also best for the player. Thank you.